Hey everyone, recently a user asked me about a problem with my Cypress Recourse plugin. The user provided the full test, the user is visiting a page, types the search, and then there are a couple of pages. The user iterates to the next page a couple times, and then wants to iterate back by clicking the previous button until that button is no longer there. So how can you do this? Something is not working. I already prepared the spec, so now let's see if we can fix this. I'm gonna open Cypress, end-to-end -end testing, start testing in Electron browser and click on the spec. Now, did you see that flash? Well, because we need to set the URL as a base URL. But for now, let's just observe a test. So it's clicking on the next button a couple of times. So it ends up on the fourth page and now it's clicking on the previous button and it seems like it's going back to the second page and clicks again and goes to the first page and then it tries to click again for some reason and then the number of attempts times, not times out, reaches zero so it runs out of allowed attempts and that's where it fails. Okay, so a couple of things. Let's look at the test itself. We're visiting this page, so let's move the domain into the Cypress config file as a base URL. It will help us a lot and it will avoid with flash of page at first. And now a thing that you might notice are all this extra stuff from Google Analytics. Let's block it so we don't pollute our command log unnecessarily. So I see Google Analytics and scintercept qualtrics.com. Okay, so save it, save the spec. And another thing I want to notice, uh, or I want to fix, usually using force true when you click is a sign of a problem. Let's see what happens if you remove it from the spec and run it again. Okay, we're on the first page of results, going to the second. Everything seems to be working so far. Okay, now we have to go back by clicking on the previous link and I removed force true and so far it's working. Okay, and now it's trying to click and seems to fail and it says trying to click on this a ref and it's invisible because display none. So I can see the pref here but it says it's invisible. So let's figure out what is trying to click, why is it invisible? So the way the test is written, it gets all the anchor elements. And there are a lot of them, right? 130. And then it finds the one that contains the text prev. And now notice nothing is highlighted. So I'm not sure what it actually found because I see prev right here. And when it clicks on it and this element seems to be invisible, right? So which one did it find right here? If we click on contains prev, yeah, prev. So it's not the element we see on the page, is that true? Okay, so notice when the link becomes disabled, right? If you cannot go to a previous page from the first page, it's not the link that you see, it's just a span. While we're trying to click on something with the page height. That's why the force true was necessary. Okay, so this link that's invalid or no longer works, right, has certain attributes and the links that do work, right, that are displayed have different attributes. If you compare them right here, active page link next. And here, notice no active page link previous. So let's update our test a little bit. And for now, I'll stop the recursion because I'm not gonna use it. Instead, I'll concentrate on this. All right, so first of all, we can remove the weight and then in order for us to find the next link, instead of splitting it into get and then contains, why don't we use contains? And we know the link is active, so it, it's displayed right here if it has class active. And the text should be next. Okay, so let's click it three times. And we want to verify that when we click, we actually go to the next page before we click it again, otherwise we can accidentally click it still on the previous page. 
So how do we know we loaded the next page? It's when the page number here changes. So let's figure that out. So we can use it to validate. It's an input. It has ID page number. So why don't we use that? So at first, we want to get the page number input element and it should have value of one. And when you click, it should go to the page two, three, and four. So let's see if this works correctly. Okay. We're checking and we are on page two and then clicking and we go to the page three and then page four. All right. That seems to work. Um, let's go to the recursion and we're going to do the same trick. Okay. We're going to find an active link, the one that the user can see, right? And should be clicking like right here. And we disable the built-in existing assertion because on the first page, it's not going to be there. We're still checking if it's empty, if it's not there. And if it is there, we're going to click on it. And now I bet it will all work out. And I'm going to check if I'm back on the first page by checking the page number at the end. Let's see. Okay. Clicked on the next. Second page number is there. Click next. Third page. Click next. Fourth page. Now we're going back. We found the previous link and clicked on it. All right. We found the previous link. Clicked on it. And when we go to the first page, it's no longer there. Notice it did not find any elements with class active and text previous because this span doesn't count. We're looking for a anchor and when we finished and we verified that we are on the first page. There is one other detail that I suggest you add. So here we check the page number clicked, confirm we are on the next page. We want to do the same here for each iteration. Well, how do we know the number? Because here we go one, two, three. Here we just go to the previous page. Well, let's grab the input element, invoke its val jQuery method. That gives us value n, let's say. Okay. And we click on the active previous link. We know it's there because we know the empty predicate return false. So we're going to the post callback. And now we get the same input element and it should not have value of n. So we get whatever it's there, click on a previous link and then confirm that the value has changed. That means we went to the previous page. Let's just confirm it works. Okay. Going to the fourth page right about now. And now we're going back. Okay, and notice the assertions of the page number should not have value four, should not have value three. That means it changes to something else. And then we are on the first page. So I hope this clarifies the matter. Okay, and makes Cypress recurse probably slightly easier to understand.